Ironically, Galeano's death comes just a day after what almost all are describing as a historic summit of the Americas in Panama. Attention has focused on the return of Cuba to this regional forum half a century after it was expelled from the OAS by the United States. But many leaders at the summit insisted that this should not be seen as a concession by Washington, but rather as a vindication of one of Latin America and the Caribbean's longest standing demands. I am pleased that finally our sister and closest neighbor, Cuba, has taken its rightful place around this important table. This celebrated move is a victory for the people of the Americas. More than 200 years of the United States independence, this country still sees the region not only as its backyard, but its own property by divine right. Cuba is here because its people have waged an unprecedented struggle of more than 60 years for dignity. We welcome our sister Republic of Cuba as a full member of this forum, from which it should never have been excluded. Nonetheless, our joy cannot be complete because we still have to eliminate the inhumane and illegal blockade against Cuba. We are sure further steps will follow like the end of the embargo, which for more than five decades have punished the Cuban people and weakened the inter-American system. We might think this is a plan. We'll agree with Cuba to try to improve relations with Latin America. All the world wants an end to the blockade, and Cuba hasn't surrendered. But we'll confront Venezuela because it isn't democratic. Twenty odd elections, and it isn't democratic? Thank God we are not alone. We have the support of UNISOR, CELAC, and the G77 plus China group. And more importantly, we have the support of the peoples of the world. President Barack Obama's executive order against Venezuela drew condemnation from almost all of the leaders at the summit. But the U.S. president wasn't present for many of the speeches. That's apparently because he had a bilateral meeting with the Colombian president. I come in the name of 30 million Venezuelans to demand that President Obama revokes the decree that threatens Venezuela. That is also the unanimous demand of UNISOR. Out of the 35 who are here represented today, 33 have said that this decree is unwarranted and should be withdrawn. We work towards that then. CARICOM has a very strong voice. We reject the United States executive order of the 9th of March and reaffirm our commitment to the peaceful resolution of differences and the principle of non-interference. Venezuela is not and could not be a security threat to a superpower like the U.S. The threat to the security of the people of the United States doesn't come from any Latin American country, but from its own mistakes, from its imperial behavior and its habit of waging war where peace should reign. What a pity that Obama had more important things to do. He came to the Summit of the Americas, but couldn't wait around to listen to his counterparts.